this is section 5.4. We're looking at slope as a rate of change. Salvatore. Asafo Powell of Jamaica set the men's 100 meter world record in Athens, Greece on June 14, 2005. He ran 100 meters in 9.77 seconds. His average speed can be found by dividing the distance by his time. So average speed equals 100 over 9.77 equals 10.2. Asafa's average speed was about 10.2 meters per second. This means that on average, he covered a distance of 10.2 meters per second of the race. Speed is an example of, rate of, of a rate of change because it is a, a rate that refers to the change in distance relative to the change in time. Okay, great. How can we find the rate of change from a graph? First of all, if this is... Osafa here, you can see on this graph, Olympic sprinter. Is this graph really accurate? What do you guys think? Let's think about it a little bit. AJ. Uh, no, because they're fluctuating speeds in that 100 meters. Good. So by showing a straight line on a distance time graph, what we're saying is that his speed is constant from the first second to the 10th second, it says that he's running the same speed. We know that's not true, right? We know at, the, at one second, he just started. So he's definitely not moving at 10 meters per second. He's speeding up, right? So this graph probably would look a lot more like this. Okay, it would, it would have some sort of curve to it, okay? Where he's gonna c cover much less distance initially, okay? And you imagine when he crosses the finish line, he's probably, you know, going at his fastest rate, right? So he's going to be up here. He's going to be covering a much greater amount of distance in relation to the same amount of time, yeah. That's the average distance, though. Shouldn't the final result cross over the average line? Because it would be more. Mm. But if you start off less... Then you have to end more for it to be apt to average out to that. Yeah, you're right. So, it's so you're saying that this line wouldn't be accurate. It would be with a distance graph, not an average distance graph. No, I'm saying like the line that you draw would yeah. be higher. Yeah, that's what I'm. Yeah, you're right. So it's tough to draw because this line would have different units, I guess you could say, than the average distance line. But if it was just a distance time graph, you would see a more natural curve happening to his speed. That's not directly important to this lesson. I just wanted to make that statement that, that, that these linear graphs, because we're learning the very basics, is not exactly uh, comparative to what's happening in, in, in real life. Okay, that was my only, my only point. Okay, so don't worry about it too much. I just wanted to make that point. So rate of change is defined by a change in one quantity relative to a change in another. The graph shows the average distance in meters of each animal or person. What do you think is meant by average distance? Who can answer that? Was that Adam? The average number of meters per second they run. Good. Yeah, that's right. Visually compare the steepness of each graph, determine the slope of each graph, rank the slopes from least to greatest. Okay, so we're all going to 10 seconds here, so we know the steepest slope is going to be uh, the one that goes the highest, right, in 10 seconds. So here's our steepest slope, uh, our cyclist is second, alligator third, polar bear, and finally our uh, Olympic sprinter. How could we determine the slopes? So what's the slope for the cheetah over here? Uh, Joseph in the middle. No problem. Alvin. Very good. So our slope is our y over our x. Okay. And what would the units be, Alvin? It'd be 31. Sorry. Yeah, my bad. The units are meters per second. So this would also actually also represent his what? Speed 
Yeah, yeah good. His speed, his average speed. <clears throat> so there's our cheetah. How about our professional cyclist? Uh, Tim. Okay, our alligator would be 15.5 meters per second. Our polar bear, 11.1 .1 meters per second. And our sprinter, 10.2 meters per second. Any questions on how we got the slope for each one of those? Just dividing the, the distance traveled divided by the amount of time. All right. Next it says calculate the speed of each animal or person as distance over time. Rank the speeds from least to greatest. So we did that. Describe how the rate of change relates to the graph of a relation. So how does it rate? How does it relate? How does this number relate to the graph? Mark. Yeah, but more generally speaking, how does the number, the slope, rate relate to the graph? No, Matthew here in the front. Not sure? Christian at the back. Um, it relates to the steepness of the line because by saying, um, say the Olympic spurge does 10.2 meters per second, mm -hmm. so on the x-axis, every unit of one second of time yeah, that's what Mark said. That's what Mark said. Yeah, you're right. That's what Mark said. But just generally speaking, how does that number relate to the graph? Tyler? The, um, the speed is equal to the slope. Yes, the speed is equal to the slope. But even more general than that, Luca? Um, the higher the number of the speed, the steeper the slope. Exactly. That's what I'm looking for. The higher the number, the steeper the slope. Okay? The closer the number is to zero the more flat the slope will be, right? So this is zero. This is slope of one, okay? Slope of 0.1, like that, okay? Slope of 99, it's gonna be like that, right? So it's important to recognize that. That number relates to the steepness of the slope, right? Example one, speed. Sarah's on the soccer team and runs every morning before school. One day she ran Five kilometers in 20 minutes, I don't believe it. I can't run that fast. It's very fast. AJ can, but not by much. How fast do you run, AJ? Uh, my best 5K was 19 minutes. 19 what? Yes. Dead on? Yeah. Close. Well, you should know the second, no? Or else we're not sure if you're telling the truth. What? 19.02.03. Oh, so it was longer than 19. So AJ is a runner, and he's only running 19 minutes. I don't know if, if Sarah's running this in a soccer match. I doubt that. Calculate the rate of change of Sarah's distance from her starting point. <coughs> Sal, what do you think? The rate of change of Sarah's distance from her starting point. So, I mean, she obviously uh, started at zero, but she, if they, she went five kilometers in 20 minutes, Five by twenty, yes. Yeah, sorry, five by twenty. She went point two five kilometers a minute. Right. It's pretty fast. Graph Sarah's distance as it relates to time. So here's that graph. Okay. Everyone understand how we created this graph? At zero, she's gone zero time. She's gone zero distance. At twenty minutes here, she's gone five k. We've drawn a straight line here. The rate of change is, uh, is Sarah's average running speed. It also is also the slope of the graph. So we learned that in the last question. There's her her speed, average speed, and it's also equal to m, which is the slope. Any questions there? Right, simple example. Example two, a little more interesting. We have a fuel consumption problem here. The graph shows the volume of gasoline remaining in a car's tank. 
So we know when we go to the gas station, your parents go to the gas station, it's usually around anywhere from $50 to $100. That's because most gas tanks are about 50 to 100 liters. Okay, and the gas prices are around a dollar per liter, right? So here's a, a typical gas tank, it's 65 liters, looks like when it's full. And then it goes all the way down to five liters after driving for 500 kilometers. So it says calculate the slope of the graph. Uh, Max, how do I get the slope? Um, so you should probably, uh, okay. you have to do 65 divided by 500. Okay, so 65 divided, a couple problems with that. So 65 divided by 500, first of all, they're both different units. So you've chosen a y coordinate and you're dividing it by an x coordinate. So you would never do that. I kind of picked on you here, Max, because this is a different scenario. So how would we, how would have we got the gr the slope before? Michael, do you remember? Remember we drew this triangle. How would we get that slope? Sorry. Yeah, we did rise over run, but we did it how? How do we find it? Yeah, we counted the blocks, right? So we, we would have just counted these y values, say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and divided it by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, something like that. There's a problem with that, though. Okay? One of the problems that's pretty obvious is that these axes are not in the same units. Okay? So that, that creates a big issue for us if we're just counting blocks. We can't do that. So from this point on, you'll no longer count blocks to get the slope. You'll actually use the coordinate points, okay? So in doing so, we can use these coordinate points, 65 and 5 and 500 and 0 to get the slope. We're still going to do rise over run. So here's rise over run. But here's our formula that we now use and will always use. And you're going to hear this about 100 times before we're done this course. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And what that refers to is the coordinate points. So this point here is y2, is, sorry, x2, y2. That's my point 2, right? And this is point 1 over here, x1, y1. Okay? So all that formula is referring to then are the coordinate points. So if I say y2 minus y1, I'm looking at my second point, taking the y value, which is 5, and minusing the first y1 y value, which is 65. Same thing for my x's. And that will give me the slope. And that's the way, moving forward, we need to count to figure out our slopes. Because we're always going to have different scenarios and it's never going to be practical for us to count blocks. So to get rise over run, you have to memorize the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Yeah. So for an increasing graph, which would be x1 and y1 and x2 and x2? Good question. Point 2 is always the one that's further to the right. Okay? But here's an interesting... Yeah, AJ? What if Like a vertical line like this? Yeah. What's the slope of a vertical line, guys? Undefined. It's undefined. So it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter? No, it's undefined. So because... So which one would be point one and which one would be point two? Doesn't, doesn't oh, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Because, because AJ, your, your y value then is going to always be uh, 1, 3, 1, say 7. Right, here's my two points, right? This is 1, 3, and this is 1, 7. When you go to minus your y values, so either you do uh, 3 minus 7 over 1 minus 1, or 7 minus 3 over 1 minus 1, you're still going to get negative 4 over 0, 4 over 0. In either case, they're both undefined. Okay, so it doesn't matter. You're right. Tyler. 
Yes, sir, for an upcoming quiz on Friday, how do you want us to figure out so the old way that we used to do it or this way? Depends on the question. If it's a question, it's really simple and it just has the, the blocks and you can easily see it's in the same units and you can count them, you can use the old way. My prefer preference is the new way with the coordinate points, okay? Because they're going to work for any graph, all right? Here's an interesting thing, though. What if we did y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2? What happens? Yeah, Adam. Will it though? Let's see. So y1, 65 minus 5 over 0 minus 500. We get negative. What happened? What happened? So. Yeah, so does it matter? No. It actually doesn't matter, surprisingly enough. So the question is, why is it y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and not the other way around? And the answer is, so that you stay consistent. Okay? Here's why. You have to pick one. And it's very important they make it y2 minus y1 so that... You pick this y value and subtract this y value. You don't want to switch them because this is what will mess people up. If I do this, this is going to be wrong. You guys see the difference? See how I switched y2 minus y1 and then I went x1 minus x2? That will make a difference. If you're going to do y1, you have to start with x1. You guys understand that? If, whichever point you pick first, that has to be consistent with your y values and your x values for that point. Okay? Why do they say y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and not the other way around? I don't know, but it was chosen and that's just to stay consistent. You always choose the second point. All right? Just like a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Why did they choose a, b, and c? Well, they just happen to be the first three letters of the alphabet. Are they the best letters? No. Should have been s1 plus s, s1 squared plus s2 squared equals h squared, right? One side of the triangle plus the other side of the triangle equals the hypotenuse squared. That would have made much more sense. But somewhere along the lines, an elementary school teacher chose a, b, c. And that's what we stick with. Why did he choose y2 minus y1 and not the other way around? I don't know, but that's what we use. Okay, that's what we stick with. Okay, so try and be consistent. B, interpret the slope as a rate of change. The rate of change of the volume of gasoline is negative 0.12 liters per kilometer. Always important that you know the units because any word problems, you're going to be asked for those units. So there's your y units in liters and there's your x units in kilometers. Your slope is y over x, so it's liters over kilometers per hour. Thank you. For most graphs, will we be doing like the, like, sorry, liters per kilometers, like something like that? Uh, like for most graphs? No, I would say that this is a specific question that applies to, the, like, these units apply to this question. And I don't, I don't know that you'll see them often, no. Um. It depends on the question, right? I would say meters per second is much more common, right? Distance? Time and speed, time. So the rate of change is just the average per given unit? Yes. The rate of change is negative because the volume of gasoline in the tank is decreasing. We also know it's negative because we can see this slope is going down. Right? Remember that? We talked about that? That's why we know it's negative. Yep. So I have a question. Do you only um, figure out whether, whether a slope is positive or negative on a graph? Because there's an example in the textbooks where there's a slide and it's going down, but you wouldn't, would you say that would be negative or would it be positive? I don't really know what you're asking. Because in the book, right, there's a question where there's a slide, right, and they want you to find the slope, and it's going down like this. So would that be considered negative? Yeah. Because at the back of the book, they, don't, they, don't, they, don't, they, don't, they say it's positive. 
No, it doesn't have to only be on a graph. Depends how you look at at the slide, right? If you're, if you're looking at it from one way, you could read it that it's going up, right? If you look at it the other way, you could say it's going down, right? It depends how you kind of look at it. It's, it's, it's tough to answer, Tyler, because it's going to be dependent on each question, okay? You got to use your judgment there. Key concepts. Rate of change is the change in one quantity relative to the change in the other. A rate of change requires units such as kilometers per hour. When a relation is graphed, the slope describes the rate of change. To find the slope of a line segment joining two points, subtract the y values to get the rise and subtract the x values to get the run. See all these things it equals? M, which is your slope, which is rise over run, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Any questions? Yes.